Hello out there to you in this problem. We've got a couple of uh, inputs. We've got capital and labor, and then this table shows us the output uh, based on the production function that is modeled. Okay, so it says, uh, let's answer some questions and then we'll draw a little graph with this. Is this production function short run or long run? How do we know? We know it's long run because with two uh, inputs, we can change them both. So that means it's long run. So something is not fixed. So you might see a problem where it says like capital is fixed at three or something like that. Uh, that would mean you're in the short run. So that's what that means in microeconomics. Uh, if the firm decides to employ six units of capital and one worker, what is that output? Okay, so we're gonna go to six units of capital on the table and one worker. That output is 600. Let's redo that in red. Okay, so it's right here, so 600. Um, and it says, what other combinations could be used uh, to produce the same level of output? So we're just gonna find the other 600s in the table. So there's a 600 there, there's a 600 there, and there's a 600 there, okay? So it looks like uh, for this company or this producer, they always have to have at least one a unit of capital and at least one worker. That's pretty common. All right, so let's plot the combinations you found on C, uh, labor on the x-axis, so we'll put a big L there, and capital on the y-axis, so we'll do the big K there. It's usually what we use instead of the C on that. This is zero, and so um, what we're gonna plot here is the output level that we would get if we used a certain combination of uh, labor and capital. So let's do the let's do the one that it's asking us about. So one one unit of labor that's right here, and then six units of capital. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll put a point right there, and then three units of capital, two units of labor. So one, two, three on the capital, and then two units here. Two units of capital and three units of labor. one unit of capital and six units of labor. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And it wants us to connect the dots. So I'm gonna do this with straight line tool. So my shaky hand doesn't mess me up. Okay. And then it says label this isoquant. So um, you wanna do whatever your instructor kind of wants you to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this uh, quantity 600. So that all of the, what you're seeing here on this uh, isoquant line, all of these combinations of inputs will give you the same output, which is 600, right? So you can also plot, this problem didn't ask us to do this, but we're gonna plot uh, another um, iso, isoquant line here. So let's look here. What if we did, uh 1200 okay so we get we'll do these in purple so 1200 1200 1200 and 1200 so we're going to plot these on a separate line i'm using more input so six units of capital and two units of labor will be right here four units of capital one two three four and Three units of labor right here. Three and four, so one, two, three. One, two, three, four. You can label these if you want. I'm just counting them. And then two units of capital and six units of labor. Two units of capital and six units of labor. Okay, and I'm gonna draw a line connecting all these guys. So this is the isoquant line that goes with the possible combinations if we wanted to produce 1,200. Okay, so that's how you would label that, and that's all you need to do. You could do other combinations if you wanted to. You could do, I could see 1,800, 2,000, whatever you want, but as you use more resources, you'll get more uh, output, and that's how to tr make a graph showing a iso simple isoquant line using a table.